Thank you everybody for coming. I'm really grateful to be a part of this event and was really honored to be invited to do a talk. Um, I wanted to straight away dive in into uh, showing some of my recent works um, as a start of my presentation. Um, this is the most recent book cover illustration I've created. Um, it's um, called Ace Mystic for Abigail Smith. Uh, the story of the character is very interesting. Uh, she is a spy and a special agent, but she cannot see the world uh, in color, only in black and white. So in order uh, to be able to see it in color, she smokes this illegal drug that brings the world in color. She can see even without the use of her eyes. Um, uh, so that's the story. Um, it was a very interesting project because I, I wanted to focus on bringing the color as the main element of the picture, wanted to show the contrast between the no color and the presence of color. Uh, and the helmet as well has no holes for the eyes. So she it just emphasizes that she can see even without um, the ability of her eyes. Um, this is another recent painting of mine. It's called Wood Elf. A cosplay approached me and wanted um, uh, to depict her Dungeons and Dragons character in a certain way. So she enjoys Dungeons and Dragons and she plays as a wood elf character who's very agile, very nimble and lives in the trees. So I had the full freedom to design the outfit, um, her environment and depict her, showing her personality. Uh, it was a very fantastic project and I really enjoyed working on it. And especially I will really love one day seeing it come to life as a cosplay costume for my client. So here is um, another illustration I've done. Uh, this is actually a um, children's book cover. I created it for Tom, Thomas, Thomas Maris. It's going to be in shops in the US uh, in August, so about now, so it should be revealed. So that's very exciting. I don't usually do children's illustrations, but that was a really fantastic challenge because um, it was just pure fun to paint with bright colors, the hues we use for children's books. Um, uh, it was just pure joy. So the character here is, um, is called Little Ginny. She is a superhero and her special powers come from her polka dots on her dress. Um, so yes, this was a, a very unusual one for me and I'm going to start working on the next um, book two of the series very soon as well. So that will be exciting. But let me tell you um, a little about myself and my background. I was born and raised in Russia and um, all my life, really, I was interested in art. I loved drawing. In fact, my friend, uh, during my recent trip to Russia, reminded me how I always carried a notepad with me and always doodled ladies and fashion and all that. So it's always been my passion. But um, as I was becoming a teenager, I, I wasn't sure what to do with my life. And my parents encouraged me to pursue a career in, um, in something more technical. So they encouraged me to get a degree in maths. Um, I did well at maths and I got my degree, but at the end of the course, I, I felt it wasn't something I wanted to connect my life with and um, decided to pursue something different. I wasn't quite sure at the time. And about then I met my future husband who happens to be English and I moved to the UK because of that. Um, having worked um, in an office environment uh, at the time, I kept thinking 
what where is my passion where does it lie what can I do with my life what sort of path should I take and I remembered those drawings uh, as a child just how much I enjoyed it and I decided to perhaps this was the time to take it seriously and really try to develop the skill and get somewhere and for it to become a job. So I picked up my pencils and I started with graphite drawings. Um, mostly did portraits for family and friends, as well as some still art. I never could imagine that you can actually paint on the computer. So it was completely new to me. And once I discovered Photoshop, I was absolutely hooked straight away. I never looked back. It's that amazing undo button that probably sold it for me. Um, and I uh, never looked back, as I said. And ever since, I just continued learning and trying to get better and improve. Back in my early 20s, I came across two artists um, who became really my first inspirations and they were the stimulus that pushed me to uh, really wanting it for myself. I could see what I could achieve and it really inspired me to learn more. So one of them is uh, the artwork here I'm sharing is Melanie Delon. I just absolutely fell in love with her style um, and um, the way she depicts femininity is really almost special to me. I will always be grateful to her. Another uh, artist is Marta Dalek. You can see an example of her amazing work here as well. Um, I, I came across her work about the same time and was just absolutely blown away. As I said, it just really pushed me to study hard and try my hand at it myself. Very early on, I was very lucky to get projects and commissions pretty much soon as I started my, my journey. Uh, this is one of my first book covers. Uh, it's called Chronicle of Chaos by um, DM Kane. I've actually done a series of book covers for her um, and um, they all depicted a shield. It had to be uh, obviously representing certain symbols that were magical for the book. Um, and um, each time on the book cover, the shield was surrounded by a different effect and a different part of the shield was uh, in focus. Uh, here is another book cover. I... The, I worked on it for David Beniston, and the book was called Did Women Win the War? It's not a fictional book. It's actually a collection of historical essays about the Second World War. It talks about uh, women's involv involvement in the war. Um, it's quite fascinating, really, covering a lot of Russian um, involvement as well, of Russian women. So this painting was a huge challenge at the time. Uh, so I'm really grateful for it. Um, it was fantastic because it was very compli complex scene. I had to think of perspective, colors, and at the same time, try to depict some emotion as well. Later on, I was very fortunate to be working with Christopher Mitchell on a series of books. He's a fantasy author. Um, so if you're not familiar with the fantasy genre, then think Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, the worlds in which different races like elves and orcs are battling against each other, this sort of thing. Um, I'm really um, a massive fan of this genre and I find it very inspiring. So I was very happy to be working with Christopher Mitchell. This is the first cover uh, on the left-hand side you can see. Um, that I created for him. Uh, then um, he wanted me to portray different characters and depict their personality, depict their emotions, perhaps their intent. So 
that's where I started thinking of storytelling more and going deeper there. I continued working on more characters, as you can see examples here for Christopher Mitchell. And all of the series had um, a star featuring at the background as a reminder of the continuation of the books. As I work with a lot of fantasy authors, I um, ended up actually taking on some map commissions for the fantasy world they create. So fantasy genre often involves adventure and characters travel from one part of the continent to another, etc. So uh, it's a very interesting project for me as well and something else I can offer to authors. In 2020, I was uh, very fortunate to be working with Mariam Smith on her devotional music um, albums. So she wanted to create covers for them that were spiritual in the feeling, that portrayed a lot of light and happiness. So I think we achieved that. And uh, again, it was something out of my comfort zone, which uh, was really exciting and challenging to work on. Here's her second album as well. So I've spent over 10 years of learning, trying to get better at, at art. And um, there are so many influential artists out there, so many inspiring artworks. It's really hard to name few people who influenced me but really um, if I was asked who my teacher was that would be Izzy Medrano because um, I absolutely admire his work he is a Magic the Gathering artist and now works for Netflix um, really one of the senior senior artists in the in the industry and I was very lucky to come across his um, um, course which is available on Gum Road. So it's called Izzy's Logic of Light and Color. And I just completely uh, decided to throw myself into it, bought all the episodes and studied hard and did the practices and absolutely loved it. Here's Izzy. Uh, could not recommend it enough for inspiring, uh, aspiring artists out there. Um, another figure is I would like to mention is Bjorn Hori. He's a concept artist and he works for gaming industry. He's very famous for his monsters um, designs. So he's been fantastic influence as well. Henning Lud Ludvigsen is another friend and fantastic teacher. Um, he's a character artist and he also works for board games board game designs as well. And of course, on top of that, I tried to soak in everything I could from the internet, uh, YouTube videos, academic books, um, and Imagine Effects magazine, tried to read all the articles and get better. I think when we, uh, as artists, study art, it's very important to not only do the theoretical research, but also put in the hours of studies. So here are some examples of my studies, whether they were from books or photo studies, or when I attended live workshops and painted live models. I love to set myself a challenge to work on perhaps one or two aspects during a study and trying to simplify it and perfect that aspect. I think it really is helpful in learning. But in, the, in this industry, it's very easy to get bogged down in work, to only focus on your commissions, to work hard, many hours, sleepless nights, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm a firm believer that 
uh, we need to go back to our roots and think why do we do it in the first place? Why did we start painting or drawing? Uh, why did we choose this career path? Perhaps it was just because as children, it was the sheer joy of painting or drawing and expressing ourselves. So I try sometimes to give myself the opportunity to just experiment, paint, whatever comes to my head, have no agenda, no stress. And then something always comes out of it, like these paintings I'm, I'm displaying to you, for you now. Um, it was always something you learn or you come up with something you never tried before. As I was creating quite a lot of book covers, I was actually very honored to be given a few awards. For example, this book cover from the ashes. I, I didn't do the typography, but I created um, the painting behind it. Uh, this one won an award in 2018. And this one, much earlier one, um, I painted this um, cover art in 2015 and press F5 to load game for Levaravel. And that also uh, won an award in March 2015. I was very lucky to be featured in Imagine FX magazine. I think the first time I appeared in it was 2014. And later on, I believe it was 2017, I got um, Artist of the Month award. They also listed me as um, one of uh, at first 15 and then 17 fantasy artists um, or fantasy artists that uh, should be checked out on their website creative blog. And recently I have also contributed to the article that you see on the right hand side. I was sharing my views and opinions on how students of art can actually educate, educate themselves without going to an art school because not everybody can afford that or maybe they have commitments, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a really fun project to be a part of. In 2020, last year, I took part in Unreal Bjornament competition. It was hosted by Bjorn Hurry that I mentioned earlier, and it consisted of different stages. I was lucky to get to semi, to get to quarterfinals, and um, it was an amazing experience during which I pushed myself further and tried my hands at something I maybe wasn't comfortable with before. So here you can see. Um, one of my entries, it was called It Came From Nature. We were given an assignment, I believe it was two weeks, in, within two weeks to create an artwork uh, for this title. So I thought, oh, why don't I paint a druid since I love fantasy genre so much? Um, and here it is. It was fantastic to play with two light sources and the expressive hair uh, and the pose, I think I learned a great deal working on it. This is the next assignment, next uh, stage of the competition. It was called Darkly Ever After. It was probably my most favorite stage. We were meant to take a famous fairy tale and um, turn it upside down, create a horror um, illustration for it, something twisted and bizarre and gory. So I thought, why don't we look at Snow White from a different angle? Perhaps she's not as innocent, innocent as she appears to be. And this artwork came to be. It uh, was a huge amount of fun. And here is another entry I did um, for the competition. Uh, the assignment was Elemental Beast. Um, I created this um, air elemental who appears on the horizon 
with uh, someone at the, fr uh, the front. I wasn't really um, doing a lot of landscape scenes at the time, but that was really a um, great stimulus to try my hand at it as well. If you're interested um, what software I'm using, uh, it is Photoshop. I tried Coral Painter, and I think it's fantastic, fantastic application, especially for those who are really coming from, from traditional media background. And since I only did graphite traditionally, and I taught myself to draw and paint digitally only, Photoshop just suits me best of all. I find it that I'm really comfortable with it. I'm also a beginner at 3D pro programs like Blender and DAS. I'm slowly teaching myself to get bet better at it. It's really helpful to uh, map out a scene in it. And in general, 3D is fascinating and I definitely want to explore more in that direction. I'm often asked if I'm using um, Cintiq monitor that I paint directly on. Um, no, I'm not. I'm actually using a Wacom Intuos 5 tablet, if anyone is interested. Uh, let me share with you a bit about my creative process. I'll use my painting of the wood elf as, uh, as the illustration for it. So how I usually work with clients is um, at, the, at the very beginning, I really want to understand what's required of me. Even if they explain they want to um, have this character depicted in this scene, I really want to understand why. Um, what, what am I trying to say with each painting? What am I trying to portray? Is there an emotion? Is there perhaps an aftermath of a certain event, or perhaps we're about to see something happen. I go a lot, a lot, a lot back and forth with the client at that stage, and eventually I produce a sketch, which often is black and white. Um, as long as we agree on all the details, we continue to the next stage. I introduce color and build more detail. So let me show you examples of how. Um, I worked on this particular illustration. So it started as a black and white sketch of the wood elf. She's sitting on the tree. She's nimble. <clears throat> and then I thought of introducing color. I thought it worked better if it was flipped. Very low detail, the first light source. Building on detail, creating extra light sources and refining more until I get the full illustration. That's pretty much it, it in summary. Recently, I had a lot of students cover my artworks for their school or university projects, which by the way, I'm really grateful for and very honored to be a part of. And they often ask me, what are the sources uh, of inspiration for me? It's very hard to answer. I find it. Um, I find it. It doesn't have to be art that inspires art. I think everyday life can inspire art. I think people are amazing for me. Watching people's faces, expressions, um, subtle motions, um, a little flicker of emotion in their face. That's what I find inspiring, and I'd love to be able to do more and more um, character illustrations where I can show that more, um, bring it to focus. I find femininity, sensuality, very moving. And I think that's why I paint a lot of women as well. Um, and then, as I mentioned, fantasy genre uh, is just fun and always creates different associations, different images in my mind. But yes, music, nature, Anything can be inspiring. Because I mentioned that I am 
really fascinated by faces. I do a lot of portraits, especially of women. I love to experiment with different lightings, uh, create different situations, perhaps portray different emotions. Like for example, this study I created uh, was based on the more harsh direct light, uh, creating more of a horror look. Um, this painting is more nostalgic. Um, I just found it very sensual um, to work on this one. Anything in a portrait can be in influential for what sort of emotion it will invoke in the viewer. It could be the way the hair is behaving, the way the light's falling, the subtle expressions. Um, I'd love to explore that even deeper and get better at it. Here's another example of a portrait. I think here I set myself a challenge to create um, a, a feel of softness and bring attention only to the one focal point that I found was most important. In this situation, I thought lips could be that. And I really tried just technically to achieve the softness. It was a great experiment. Here's another version of um, the illustration I created for Abigail Smith, uh, keeping it more black and white and bringing attention more just to the rainbow color of her special drug. And if I, um, I'd like, if I'd like to, uh, to answer the question of what my current projects are, then at the moment, I'm, I've got a lot, of, a lot of exciting things going on. As I, men I mentioned, lit uh, little Ginny Polkadot is going to have a sequel. So I'm going to work on that book cover very shortly. At the moment, I'm painting um, an original character um, for another author. It's a very dynamic scene. So um, really pushing myself to create more story, to create um, more movement with the painting, uh, to make it more almost suitable for game industry a bit more. At the same time, I'm also working on a lot of fascinating illustrations. Uh, they're not book covers, actually. They are um, illustrations for chapters. Um, the book uh, is very deep and psychological, very honest as well. I can't really reveal a lot more at the moment, but um, there is a lot of exploration of emotions and inner demons. So expect a lot of dramatic scenes and um, almost theatrical paintings. I'm really excited to do that and hope to obviously share them very shortly with you all. In future, I would absolutely love to continue working on my level and my skill to be involved in various projects I'm always open to anything unusual, as long as it sort of sparks interest from me, as long as I can feel connected and inspired, I'm on board. But I think where I'd really love to get to is I would love to create character artworks for card games. Examples are Magic the Gathering um, by Wizards of the Coast, or maybe Wise Wizard Games, as well. Of course, they don't have to be the giants of the industry like those, but it would be um, the topping on the cake. Absolutely. It, it is a dream. So obviously, we can just all we can do is work hard towards something. But as I said, it, it doesn't have to be um, an amazing project for me to be interested as I mean, on a large, not large scale project. I'm really happy working with individuals as well as co with companies, uh, as long as I'm connected to the piece. And I think on this note, I'd really like to thank you all um, and 
really appreciate you all being here. And thank you so much for your support. Um, here are my details if you want to see more and stay in touch. You're always welcome to send me a note. Um, so thank you so much. And um, if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them as well.